Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from GTD Nordic. I am Martin Røvik as always and I'm as always here with my good friend and colleague Lars Roskil Hendriksen. Privet Lars. Privet Martin, good to see you as always and looking forward to recording another episode for all the GTDers and GTD curious listeners and viewers out there. We always start off by reminding you of the purpose of this podcast, which is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTD. So we hope that today's episode supports you in that. If you're new to GTD, we always recommend you go back and listen to episodes one through six to get an introduction to GTD and the basics. Today's episode is number 68 of the podcast. And the topic of today is listener questions. Indeed, and we've receiving we are receiving all the time new questions from from listeners. And if it takes a little while before we answer, please be patient. We care about your questions, and they will be answered eventually. Some of, some of you are asking really difficult questions. Uh, to answer easily, so there's uh, maybe a little hesitance from our part to to try and answer them, but they are in our system, and you're not lost. So, and um, absolutely. Should we just dive in, Lars? What's the first listener question we will answer today? Let's do that. Yeah, so we decided to go back and, and pick up some of the the uh, older questions that we had uh, received to make sure that we, we covered them, them all. And the first one is from Jerry. And he says, uh, hello, Lars Morton. I got a question for your podcast. Um, over the years, in search of a tight bulletproof system for my productivity, I've given up on several systems due to it breaking under heavier overload of information. I believe that GCD is the solution to this problem. So here's a question. Suppose I am a contractor and I have a project to build a hospital from the ground all the way up, and I have managed to complete this successfully using the GCD methodology. Well done, Jerry. I look at the tremendous amount of engineering data that has been produced. Uh, personnel of you know 500 to 2,000 people have worked on this uh, over the course of three to five years. I see data in the range of one to two terabytes produced. How would I organize all of this data in a way, in a GTD way, such that it would all be relevant and easily accessible for me sitting at the very, very top with minimum dependency on all the others who have worked on this project for interpreting this information for me? Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for being a part of my life. When, when, thank you, Jerry. When, when you read this question, I, I, I kind of get this, this gut reaction says, thank you, Jerry, for asking this question today. Mm-hmm. We're very happy that you, you did. Is there any other questions? <laughs> 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 no, but, no, because it is, there is no straight, easy answer to, to what he asks, and uh, mm. at least as, as I see it. Um, the, the, uh, the, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, what is your take on this? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, first of all, I can say, as, as I was saying in the pre-show, that I can I can certainly uh, relate to this, not to the the exact same level of, of detail that that Jerry is mentioning, mm. but but as a you know, in my former life as an IT consultant, we would you know build uh, personnel payroll systems uh, for for you know um, global companies, and uh, there would always be a ton of information relating to that, and it was always you know fun to see, fun to look at, uh, look through when you were in that project. It all made sense, and then you would go into the next one and the next one, and then at some point you might want to look back and see what you had saved from earlier, and it would all sort of yeah, yeah, I kind of remember something about that. Um, so I can I can certainly relate to to you know the the wish to be able to capture all that information, store it in some sensible way that you could then retrieve and understand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to understand all of that, uh, all of those details, um, you know, there are, there will be specialists on, on all of those uh, subtopics of that specific project. Mm -hmm. So having a way to understand that, make it, as he says, relevant and easily accessible for me sitting at the very, very top, um, that, that might be, uh, might be a challenge. I think really m- much of it comes back to, from my perspective in how, how things are documented. So, so really it's a question maybe parallel to GCD and how the system and how the project was, was managed and what kind of documentation was produced and how did they, uh, you know, to what level of detail were they described and how were they 
directed who were they writing this to were they writing this to the the specific to the people on the ground who are actually building the things were they describing a high level you know process and then way to build things hmm. so i think for me the question would come back to and, and you know how, how was this all written and then from that perspective just like you said it's it's very individual how you would then structure it how it would make sense and comes back to the the, the type of project that that uh, jerry would be working on hmm. Now I'm thinking that there is there is two ways of attacking this, and I I would prefer the first one, which is um, document as you go uh, and mm. try and th think into the future. Who would need this at what time, yeah. and in what kind of uh, uh, format, and uh, try and structure it as as it happens. Mm. Uh, and then um, it could be that you would um, need at some point. Um, like Microsoft project, which is, you know, the Gantt diagrams, where you can also mm. store documents, you can store links to documents, you can store notes. And that, but that takes it to the second, you know, the another level of, of project planning. Um, getting things done has never been um, touted as, you know, the, the project planning system for a huge project. No, it is not. It's for all the other projects that you might uh, life happens and you would like to do something about it and you would like to mm. have something happen and uh, sometimes you need project uh, planning tools with Gantt charts and resource allocation and resource tracking and uh, budgeting and everything and sometimes you just need um, your decide outcome and your next actions and um, so I'm 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 a I'm little hesitant to say anything in this regard, except that mm -hmm. maybe you know record as you go, and start using yeah. you know have a little reflection time, set aside a little reflection time at the end of the day to to reflect on what happened, and how do I need to document this so that I can share this with the right people after. So if we're going to yeah. do it again, we can do it again with you know do it faster, easier. Mm, yeah, and maybe a debrief at the end to to go through and, and, and capture as much information as well. Um, just on that note, you're reminding me about the, I think the most recent podcast, uh, for those of you who are GTD Connect members right now, they are reusing some of the old um, recordings that you can buy, one of them being Managing Projects, uh, the, the series there. And, and, and I was just listening to it uh, yesterday where they talk about the, the projects list and how people structure this differently so again now we're, we're more talking about a, a a reference setup here but just from projects perspective would that be one big project and then that microsoft project the overview with all the different moving parts going on right now and again chart setup where that might be support material and where some people might say well these these are actually you know different projects that i have going on in, in my life and how people want to structure them so if you're on uh, gtd connect if you're a member i highly recommend to listening to to uh, to the managing project series uh, i think that was episode three that i just listened to yeah and, and the david allen company has uh, some really good resources on that and um you know, gtd connect is a paid service but there's a lot of value behind that paywall for you mm, absolutely get better at getting things and all the uh, all the the setup guides and everything they have uh, in written material is also available to you as you know for free if you understand my air quotes mm. now if you listen <laughs> so, uh, you pay for them by your uh, the, um, the, um, sub subscription to the service but um, mm. and there's so much good stuff in there yeah and and but to to, to think before you or, you know try and structure before you do that is a good thing always you know if you think mm. this is um i've seen so many times when i've um when i have not done this it it and it's a little complex and I need to reuse it, uh, it's it's not ending well. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so when I start a new project, like we are in a process of a big one now, maybe some news coming on, on our big project later, uh, which involves all the Nordic countries of getting things done. And uh, and uh, the planning ahead on the structure of my, my reference system has been crucial for me to now have a system that I can easily uh, toss things into and I have a structure where I know where it where things goes that that has helped me to make sure that I look semi-intelligent when I talk to people <laughs> where, my, where my stuff is um, 
Yeah, especially on projects where you collaborate with with many other people, like uh, like yeah. uh, like Jerry was saying that you know there are so many so many people involved in this, and of course he doesn't have uh, you know direct one to one contact with all of these people. But there are different managers, and, and where are you in in each of these stages, and how do you then manage all of that information and 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 make sure that you're moving forward? Yeah, yes, exactly. So, all right. Should we go for the next one? Yes, and I hope, Jerry, you got something out of this. <laughs> yes, fingers crossed, Jerry. <laughs> the next question is from Erwin, who says, Hi, it's me again. So yeah, we got a question from Erwin uh, in, a, in a former episode, and he sent in that question. That was actually late last year, I see, from my, from my list here. He says, I have a quick question about the someday maybe list and next action list. Do you think it's possible to move actions from next actions list to someday maybe list? For example, during the weekly review, you don't want to move forward on this action for now, so you put it on the someday maybe list. Or do you think that when you choose that an action is active, you can't put it to the someday maybe list? Thanks. And that was from Erwin. The, uh, the answer is yes, you can move it. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but just to, to, to let's, let's, let's back up just a little, um, because when you structure this in some kind of a tool, if it's paper or digital, um, you will structure your project or decide outcomes like job decide outcomes or job pro uh, work project and private project maybe. And it always uh, is good to make then a someday maybe folder and could be also someday maybe next actions if your system doesn't um, automatically move your projects into a state where you can't see it if you drag it to someday maybe. So if you have, for instance, Microsoft to do, um, if you have, um, let's say I've created a project, let's go private, it's called um, cabin refurbished before summer 2022. So uh, my hashtag would be cabin, which creates a link to my next action call, um, call Lars Re Dugnad at uh, the cabin. <laughs> For those of you who are Nordic, <laughs> you know what Dugnad is. It's a, an, um, a way to, to get your neighbors to help you or your friends to help you when you need help. For doing something. <laughs> so um, then, then that, that would be an active project and an active next, next action, which will live then on my... Um, uh, respectively, uh, personal and private project list and my next actions list for um, the calls. If that's you know a calls mm. list or it's just at the office or at home, I don't I don't care. But when I understand that I don't have time or energy or it's not uh, something I've decided to move on, or because life changes. Your priorities changes. You have yeah. to be able to to have a light-footed hand on your system and then move things out of in and out of focus. And the way that you do that, and it's very beneficial for your mental health. So if you don't feel comfortable doing something with a project, then move it to someday maybe and grab that next action as well yeah. to get it out of your here. So have a next action. Uh, so, so someday maybe next action. Someday maybe um, project could be beneficial for you. So we can just drag things out of focus. I think you agree, exactly. Lars. I, I think I do. And I just want to mention that. So so obviously, we're not native English speakers. And I just love that the light footed hand on your system <laughs> that you just said. Uh, that's yeah. what you get from the GTD Nordic. <laughs> that's what you get from the GTD Nordic podcast. That's yeah, exactly. the kind of, you know, special, special expressions that you will not find anywhere else. <laughs> not else. No, but I completely I'm agree. And I think it's, it's a really critical part of the, you know, your GTD practice to be aware of you know things like you just said things change and you have to take a step back especially in the weekly review as uh, as everyone also mentioned is you know take a step back to actually have time to to do this and I see this playing out in my system as well that I will sometimes have to add different perspectives or layers or move things around or you know just where from a you know, in, in, in some cases, like right now, so many things are going on that I, that I really want to move forward on. And I don't really um, 
have a good, um, you know, I don't want to move things around too much because I know I'll, I'll, I'll get to the other side in, in just, uh, just um, you know, a relatively short amount of time. So just, uh, you know, however you can structure it in your system, making sure that you can park things so you're seeing the things that you need to be seeing and have that right menu of options to choose from is just absolutely critical. So, yeah. yeah. Go for it. Move uh, move those things around. Make yep. them active. Make them uh, make them uh, go to the someday maybe list and park them for a while. Mm-hmm. It's um, yeah, certainly a, a critical aspect of the of the methodology for sure. It, it is. It is. And I'm reminded when we had that good laugh about <laughs> my light for the tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm, we have a listener in in the U.S. who has become a friend of mine. He is, um, uh, you know, a very um, um, avid GTDer, and uh, he listens to us on his podcast player in I think one and a half speed. And uh, one day his uh, daughter came inside the room and she, he was listening and they was <laughs> and he <laughs> says, says I'm listening and, and she asks, what are you listening to that and, and 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 he replies I'm listening to the Nordic chipmunks so. yeah <laughs> so. the Nordic chipmunks with the the interesting expressions I think yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> we, are very creative. We, we have to find a place where we can add a tagline for the for the podcast <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, so, okay. Exactly. The last question is from Andreas, who lives in Odense, where I live as well. He says, uh, hi, Lars, I have a listener question for the podcast, which we have emailed about previously. I'm an avid GTD user at work using Outlook and partially uh, on, a, on a personal level as well in the Todoist. When things are moving fast, uh, or th- sorry, when things are moving slow, so when you know it's uh, vacations and similar, my my personal GCD system runs really well. But when things are really busy at work, my personal GCD system suffers quite a bit because I'll be too tired to to work it. Uh, I don't want to, you know, have my computer and my phone when I'm finally off work. Um, mm-hmm. Things like that. I have considered putting both systems together in the same place, which would be in Outlook, since I cannot use Todoist at my work. So I'll, I'll put those things together. But on the other hand, I don't really you know, want to mix personal and professional stuff. So that's why I have kept those two systems uh, separate. And um, you just live with the fact that my personal GCD system will sometimes suffer when, when things are busy at work. What are your considerations and experiences with other GTD users keeping the you know personal and professional safe in the same system or separate? And that was Andreas from Unza. Okay, um, greetings from Oslo. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we are no the best practice of getting things done when it comes to a system is to have as few as possible. Uh, as hmm. many as you need and uh, saying that it means that when you are if it is possible you would have it in one place um, and, and but some people can't and so the best practices is if you can have it in one system and the reason being that you will have ideas at work when you that has to relate to your personal life and vice versa and um, having just one um, inbox in tray for everything um, keeps your the complexity of your system down and hmm. i just realized when you when you r- read this question that i might have a very good idea for him because as okay. you know lars we are you know microsoft to do has taken a big step up the last well year or so and they they have something really you know interesting news to to, to share with us and that is part of the office 365 so if you have that subscription at work you would be uh, in in the go and the the reason i'm saying this is because you can have a free outlook account if i'm not f- totally mistaken your first name dot last name at outlook.com and you can use that for your personal stuff and the way that you would do that would you will uh, share the lists uh, you have at work sorry do you have at home with your home uh, user which means that everything that you put in when you are at work will show up in your home lists and you will not see your work lists when you are at home mm-hmm. yeah uh, that's a great tip and that that might actually be the the best option for for andreas um 
and and yeah, in my experience as well, taking a step back, you know, uh, keep keeping it simple is always a good uh, good recommendation. There'll be I tend to see it less. I don't know if it's the same for you, Mod, but I tend to see less people struggling with with uh, let's say access to the list. For example, one consideration might be that you were, you know, you want when you're at home, you want to be able to see your let's say your your list at home or your errands when you're out and about uh, to mm-hmm. see if there's anything else you might need to pick up. And of course, if you need to open your laptops and connect with VPN. And, and uh, to go in there and find your list, obviously that's not going to work for you. So you do need no. to have those uh, those kinds of systems uh, separate, or you just don't want to want to see them. So I think that's a that's a great recommendation to try to see if you if you could then mix them in in that way, have them have them accessible, having mm. access maybe to multiple accounts, so you can yeah navigate them kind of like you said that you don't yeah. necessarily want to see. Or it might be you know, I see more and more people playing with paper <laughs> in the sense that it's, you know, it, it's not a lot, but it's, it's still a, you know, a considerable number of people that, that do tend to play around with paper. And they, it might be a mix. They might be printing their lists and working off those printed lists for, for the, during the week. And then at the end of the week and during the week, a weekly review, they'll go back in and, and update everything. Um, so for some people, that might be a, a, a better approach. But yeah, I think uh, in in his specific case, uh, it might be nice to actually um, connect them like you like you suggested. Mm. So that, for instance, you have the possibility to sit at work and plan when you're doing your weekly review. You need access to both systems. So then you will use your your to do. Um, uh, work-wise for everything and you will have access to your private projects and your next actions at home and maybe errands and, uh, and then you know you plan and you get it out of your head your your head is clear and when you come home or you can then pick up a tablet where you only have access to the, the, the personal account uh, so that you, when you open it will only see um, maybe two lists which is you know the, the, the side outcome private or private projects and the next actions at home and errands and that makes it and you can have it on your phone if you want and then you will not see your work related stuff when you're at home but you hmm. have access to yeah. your lists and you can add to them yeah, yeah exactly and if you have All right. I'm sorry but and, and you can also structure this if you have you can log on to two different accounts from your browser. If you want to use two different browsers, that's also possible. So you can, can have access to, to uh, both systems simultaneously hmm. uh, when yeah. you are um, uh, at work. So. Yeah. And just one, since we're anyway uh, nerding uh, a bit on the on the system side, um, uh, he did mention in the uh, in the uh, the email. Uh, he says, um, uh, "It would be an outlook because I cannot use to do is that my work." Um, I will tend to hear that from people that um, focus on installing the application. Hmm. But in, in the case of Todoist, they have a very nice browser version that can do basically anything you want to do uh, that you could also do in the app thing. So unless they actually specifically blocked Todoist in uh, as, a, as a website hmm. that they wouldn't want you to go to, um, then, then it, it might actually be a, an option for him to have access to it there as well. Yeah, I, I, I unfortunately for to do is see some of my or f- more than one of my clients um, abandoned to doists uh, because they lost the, the Outlook integration, the plugin to Outlook. Mm. And it's a, it's a big hassle where you get security warnings. Do you really want to use this plugin? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a dangerous for mm. you. And uh, that scares a lot of people. And uh, now lately they have said that if you want to use this, you have to be logged on as an admin user for your machine and the system and call your IT. That makes kind of like the barriers mm-hmm. went up uh, a lot. So I see, unfortunately for, for Todoist, and you know, we've been, we have been in contact with them regarding this um, the integration and they don't give us you know any answers on uh, how and when that will be fixed and how they will use that so so in the mean meanwhile while we wait for to do is to, to get their act together or <laughs> I don't know if it's them or uh, the Microsoft teams who are, who are who are saying we can't work with you because because um, but until then, then uh, Microsoft to do is where a lot of our clients or my clients go now. Yeah. They have a very 
beautiful integration in the web browser version of Outlook, where you can open up My Day and then drag and drop emails as tasks. You can archive them first and then drag them from the archive to, to the add as task, and then you can then access that at any time from to do. Hmm. The, the, the tasks is then linked back to the, that specific email. And, yeah. uh, and I would say, you know, you try it out uh, because uh, you, your mileage may vary, uh, of course, but but uh, but they did update the, the plugin. Um, we just tried it out in a seminar last week. Uh, it has improved significantly. There was a, a challenge with people where they don't have an... Um, like an Outlook account, Exchange account. Uh, if you only have uh, Pop uh, and an IMAP, mm. then it might not work. But uh, but I tried to set it up on my account. It worked uh, very well. We also tried forwarding to to do it, and they improved that handling significantly. So mm. when you in 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 a previous uh, version, you would forward it and it would just take the text of the email. Now it's attached, it handles uh, attachment as well. Uh, so it, uh, it's it's much better. It might be only the premium version because uh, I'm not sure that uh, all the comments and, and fi file attachments will, will work in, in, in the normal version, free version. But um, but it actually might, uh, some things have improved uh, recently yeah. in, in that area. So so again, give it, give it a try to see, see what yeah. works for you. Hmm. Uh, no, what I'm what I'm um, um, have gripes with with to do is is the plugin version of the, the the program itself beautiful. It's easy. It's mm. um, easy to structure. Um, but and I would if you are going to do, to do this, you should have the the premium version. You get access to a lot of cool stuff like uh, tagging that can give you the possibility to create uh, next actions lists with tags. Um, yeah, so so I'm I'm not dissing Todoist, but for people who try to use the plugin in the Outlook desktop application, they have seen problems mm, yeah. that they can solve apparently. Yeah, yeah. So. But like I said, I I just tried it last week and it worked fine. So there may may have been some some changes recently that that might work. But again, like you said, there are some restrictions. It did have challenges in the past, so. Yeah. Oh, what I found is that normal people, like not you and me, they are not working <laughs> with computers. They are tending to go, if it doesn't, if I get a pop-up and that I don't understand, or I have to call my admin, then I don't care anymore if it's good because you know it's, I can't have this. This is friction, and uh, even, even if I'm, I'm not sure if it would, if you reinstall the plugin would help. I don't know, um, but okay. To do is. You have a challenge yeah. <laughs> give it a try like lost, you said like you said we, we i'm a little more hesitant <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but we did Prove have you know the, we, we, there are always some straight you know and I'm, I'm, you, you must see this all the time as well mm -hmm. you know you'll be in a so in a company and there'll be variations even though they're all in the same type of machine should have the same software all of them there'll be different. and they'll yeah. have multiple accounts someone has been there longer so they migrated um last week was an open seminar so obviously there were changes from from one person to the next um, one person didn't even have the option to add anything in outlook even though he was on uh, microsoft 365 and everything so yeah mm. like i said your mileage may vary let's uh, let's see how it goes <laughs> exactly and i'm um, just saying that to do is part of microsoft so no um, I think that on that clear direction to you guys out there. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that. Uh, I just want to round this up. Um, maybe I was a little harsh with Todoist, but but Todoist is a beautiful system. I like it. I love it. I would uh, consider using it if I'm, you know, ditching my existing existing system. Uh, that will be on my list to check out. Um, if I was on a PC with, uh, you know, I loved my my desktop. Uh, application uh, then I would be hesitant to to use it because of the plugin and all the the, the hassle that has had so I'm not saying that it's um, uh, it's just an issue let's hope they will address it but okay I, I don't know if was I a little bit more positive now <laughs> I, tried to. I, I love the expression your mileage may vary because we we we've said what we could say yes exactly <laughs> give it so a try with um that light footed hand we will then close this episode <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> with our favorite expressions and <laughs> Lars will you take us out yeah just uh, first a quick uh, quick thank you to uh, to Jerry to Erwan to Andreas for their listener questions yes, uh, like we started you. off saying um, they sometimes stay on our list for a while but we do get to them so thanks for your patience as uh, as well mm-hmm. and um, we always wrap up these episodes by reminding you to head on over to gtdnordic.com have a look around you will find the country websites for each of the Nordic countries where we are present. And on each of those sites, you can find articles about GTD, links to newsletters, groups on social media where natives discuss the uh, GTD methodology. And of course, you'll find all of our offerings regarding speeches, coaching, and seminars, both physical and virtual ones. If you're outside the Nordics, gettingthingsdone.com is the place to go to find your local partners. And we are slowly approaching the GTD summer camp in Denmark. We are now, I think, 32 people signed up. Uh, it'll be so much fun. June 18 and 19, I believe it is. Go to gtdsummercamp.com to learn more about this. Morton will be there. I will be there. A lot of cool and fun and excellent GTDers will, will be there. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll level up anyone's GTD game. So if you have the chance to, to come, be, be sure to, to check that out. Mm-hmm. And, we and have, last, have, yeah. we have confirmed that uh, David Allen will uh, um, attend virtually, and yes. so if you want to hang out, understand more due to the asking questions, you have the possibility. Mm, yeah, it will be be fun. It was fun last year. I'm sure it will be this year as well. And lastly. As always, we hope that you find these episodes valuable. Um, If GTD has made a difference in your life, then please consider helping us spreading the message to more people by giving the podcast a rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Um, It really helps other people discover and learn GTD, which is why we are here. So thanks for that. And with uh, this light for the hand, I would like to say, (laughs) stay safe and stay productive until next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.